Well, it's getting late, so I'll try to abridge my uh, presentation uh, a bit here. And uh, my message to you today is uh, pretty simple. Uh, East uh, and Europe had uh, a, a tough financial crisis, but it was only a current account crisis. We know how to solve uh, those, and that has been done in a pretty ideal order. So the crisis is over, and this is uh, a masterly example of how it should be done. You can say, by and large, this was the, like the East Asian crisis, 97, 98, when everybody cried and said that this was awful and how could this happen and this is crony capitalism and what not. And one or two years later, uh, everybody realized that this was uh, uh, pretty much as good as before. Uh, the problem here was only overheating uh, and this was very much uh, connected with uh, fixed exchange rates by New Europe. And therefore, the countries in the region saw sudden stop and huge GDP falls, but they are now seeing a quick uh, recovery. And here you can see how they literally fell off the cliff after years of very high growth, the region as a whole. And here I take uh, 14 countries, uh, <clears throat> uh, the Baltic, Central Europe, uh, going down to Romania and uh, uh, Bulgaria and then Western CIS, Russia, Belarus, uh, Ukraine, uh, and Moldova. And uh, if you have grown so well for so long, then you can take a cold bath. And uh, this it really was. You see the Baltics and Ukraine, minus 14 to 18% uh, last year, and most of the rest, 4 to 8% decline, while Poland, that I will come back to, had a splendid growth of 1.7%, showing that uh, you can get out of this. And the problem all over, which uh, uh, particularly Morris Goldstein here pointed out uh, very well before, was uh, you can't have these high uh, uh, current account deficits. But what has happened now, thanks to the effective crisis resolution, is that by and large these uh, current account deficits are gone. Even Latvia has now a big current account uh, uh, surplus. And uh, another problem was high inflation, of course, uh, connected uh, with the large capital inflows. Uh, Ukraine peaked with 31%. Now Ukraine still has the highest inflation, but it's 11% uh, last month on an annualized uh, uh, basis. And uh, several other countries, notably Baltic countries, are now uh, seeing flat or, or falling prices. Inflation is not really a problem any longer. Even Russia has now 6.5% uh, annualized uh, inflation. <clears throat> and uh, the uh, good news all along was the budget balance. These countries are fiscally highly responsible, with one single exception. Uh, hungry. And uh, of course, with this uh, horrendous crisis, you get uh, uh, declines in GDP and therefore in state revenues. But uh, even so, the budget deficits uh, are only, is only really complicated today in Ukraine. Uh, Latvia last year had a budget deficit of uh, 8%, which is uh, uh, not very bad in uh, these hard times, in particular not in this kind of uh, crisis. And as a consequence, this is one part of the world with very small public uh, debts. And it's only Hungary that has a high uh, debt, uh, slightly over 70% of GDP. I've taken 2008 uh, when the crisis um, started, since I think that's the relevant uh, part. And the situation has not got uh, uh, much uh, worse since. So why didn't Poland have any crisis? Well, because Poland has done everything right, not necessarily in the last period, but in the early 2000s, when uh, Leszek Balcerowicz ran uh, the National Bank of Poland. He pursued inflation targeting and insisted on having positive real interest rates when the whole world followed Greenspan and knew 
that you should have a negative real interest rate, and Leszek Balcerowicz didn't know that. <laughs> and uh, of course, with inflation targeting comes a floating exchange rate, which impeded currency inflows. Uh, Balcerowicz was worried by credit expansion and uh, uh, house prices, so he uh, uh, adjusted his uh, monetary policy according to that, and he regulated away mortgages uh, in the euro, kept them, uh, kept them low while not prohibiting them. So the point here is that good institutions work, but only with good leadership. And that, uh, I would argue, is what has uh, been missing in much of the world. world. A few good words about the IMF. I think that the IMF has uh, learned its lesson from the East Asian uh, crisis. It has, in this uh, region specifically that I talk about, had six standby uh, programs, Hungary, Ukraine, Latvia, Moldova, Belarus, uh, and Romania. Uh, the IMF has uh, acted even faster than usual. Uh, it has gone back to basics. Uh, John Williamson's original uh, Washington consensus and not any po post-Washington consensus, uh, including a lot of structural demands. So this was essentially keep a realistic exchange rate uh, and uh, control the budget and pursue bank restructuring. You can say that these have been the three main parts of it. The IMF has poured much more money than usual on these countries, not only uh, filled out up the reserves, but also con contributed with substantial budget financing, which institutionally has mean, um, meant that it has edged out the World Bank that has played a very small role in this uh, crisis. So I would, on the whole, give the IMF very good marks in uh, this crisis resolution. The European Union, I think, acted very well in this. It assisted and co-financed IMF uh, program. It also adjacent member countries co-financed uh, the IMF program. But it was clear that the IMF took the lead and uh, the European Commission uh, followed. And there have been uh, uh, very few uh, conflicts, mainly one over uh, Latvia last year, uh, summer, when I think that uh, the European uh, Commission was right and the IMF was wrong. The European Commission won. And uh, also the European Union has uh, been successful. Uh, the big elephant that has barely been in the room has been the European Central Bank, which has effectively played no overt role. The only thing that uh, the ECB really did, was that it gave a lot of money uh, through liquidity to the uh, West European banks, uh, the Euro banks, which therefore could maintain the banks in Eastern Europe. But uh, the ECB didn't even offer a swap uh, credit to Poland, but only to Sweden and Denmark. And uh, it has done nothing to facilitate Euro expansion. And I think that the ECB is the institution that really needs to rethink its role. I might also point out that the United States in no capacity has played any role in the East European financial uh, crisis. So what are the lessons? Well, the exchange rate was frankly the only significant mistake uh, made. Of course, you should avoid dollar pegs in this uh, area with uh, Ukraine and arguably the other um, post-Soviet countries had. The currency boards that the Baltics and Bulgaria had turned out to lack credibility among foreign investors. Inflation targeting has worked well, and the, this is particularly Poland and the Czech Republic uh, that have shown uh, uh, that, but it can be done in different ways. Uh, and the euro was very credible in uh, Slovenia and Slovakia, the only two countries in the region that had it. But even when it was unilaterally adopted, as in Kosovo and Montenegro, which uh, throws another uh, shadow on uh, uh, the ECB. So the conclusion is, seize the euro or pursue inflation targeting. And uh, other lessons are that Estonia and Bulgaria 
have salvaged themselves. After all, they have not needed an IMF program because they have had persistent and substantial budget surpluses to balance their, uh, <coughs> their uh, 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 currency boards. And uh, uh, the final conclusion here is that the IMF and the uh, European Commission worked well while the ECB was not uh, in the room. For the future, what are the conclusions? Uh, this European crisis has been well handled. Uh, essentially now all but the Baltics grew, but as uh, uh, Mike Musa showed, the, the growth is uh, likely to be slow, only slightly higher than in the, uh, the, the Eurozone. Uh, the conclusion is uh, very much rush to jo uh, join the Euro, because otherwise you can't get any support uh, from uh, the European uh, Centr Central Bank. And early euro adoption is now desirable for the currency board uh, countries. Estonia has already fulfilled the conditions for euro adoption. And the question is if it will now be let in into uh, next year, 2011, or not. Uh, I do hope that they are let in. Bulgaria is on a good way of uh, doing so too. And Latvia and Lithuania uh, uh, intend to enter in 2014. And uh, for the others, I think that inflation targeting and short uh, ERM2 uh, would be uh, uh, dis uh, desirable. So Europe's present problem is the South. It's the public uh, finances and not the East. That problem has now been resolved. Thank you.